At 1.23 a.m. on April 26, 1986, Reactor 4 at Chernobyl nuclear power plant in the former Soviet Union exploded. It was and is still the largest radioactive release in history. Uh, we are at one millisievert. It's gonna fall okay. in. Don't fall in. The site and surrounding towns became frozen in time. The inhabitants fled their homes, schools, places of work and worship. Some of them died as an immediate response to the blast, and some died years later from illnesses such as radiation-induced cancer. Today, Chernobyl and its surrounding cities are ghost towns. The shops, hospitals, schools, churches and homes are empty. Some of them are even danger zones. Join us as we look into the 15 most shocking things ever found in Chernobyl. <laughs> World's Creepiest Nursery Books, tiny shoes, little beds, and dolls are objects you typically consider cute. However, these objects are strange-looking and horrifying in the ghost town surrounding the Chernobyl atomic plant. The books were last read years ago. The dolls are vacant-eyed and stiff-headed. The shoes are old, worn, and unadorable. All of these are remnants of what used to be nurseries in the five districts of Pripyat. When it was still alive, the city planned to build five schools, one in each district, but ended up with 15 nurseries. Each kindergarten was named after a Soviet cartoon character or cartoons themselves, like Golden Fish, Fairy Tale, and others. Today, evacuated and left behind to decay, these kindergartens are symbols of sadness, lost childhood, and destruction of innocence. The buildings are also very creepy with the dolls that remind you of the movie Annabelle. Interestingly, on the walls of the nurseries were posters depicting happy and comfortable communist life. These images and stories fed the children with the wrong, fanciful ideas of a place that would later cost them their childhood. After the incident, people living in towns close to the plant had to evacuate their homes, education, careers, and lives. Some of them thought they'd be back but never came back. If they did, it was to gawk at the mess the place that they once called home had turned into to see the horror that had names such as fairy tale. Now let's get ready for today's missing topic. This weird hybrid creature looks to us like a human pig. After the 1986 incident, animals around the plant were affected, and in the years that followed, they continued to be affected. There was an increase in genetic abnormalities in farm animals due to the radiation released from Reactor 4. Over 400 deformed animals were born in 1990. Some of the defects they had were abnormal coloring, extra appendages, reduced size, and facial malformations. Some of them were so severe that the animals died a few hours after birth, and as for mutations, they were most common in cows and pigs. This man-looking creature could have been one of the animals suffering the effects of the disaster, one of the mutated pigs born by a victim of the radioactive fallout. Do you think it is, or do you think it's something else? Share your opinion in the comments with the hashtag missing topic. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? <laughs> Radioactive Control Room Tourists can now visit this place, Chernobyl's Reactor 4 Control Room, the room responsible for the death of over 60 people. The room was responsible for the worst disaster in the history of nuclear power. In July 2019, it was declared by the Ukrainian president as an official tourist attraction for the souls brave enough to get close to the genesis of the explosion. The number of people who wanted to visit Chernobyl increased by about 30% when the eponymous HBO miniseries was aired in May of that same year. You know how curious humans can be. The control room is still highly radioactive. Its radiation is 40,000 times higher than normal levels, so visitors must wear protective gears respirators and helmets and take two radiology tests after they leave. They can only stay for a few minutes too, about five. Because of ongoing radiation concerns, tourists cannot wander off on their own. They must stick with the tour group. Some parts of Chernobyl are off limits, like the machine cemetery in Rosakov village, where the machines used during the Chernobyl cleanup were disposed of. The effects of being exposed to radiation are numerous. Some of them are acute sickness, tissue damage, cancer, and eventually, death. But if the Ukrainian officials say some areas are safe, we believe they're safe. <laughs> Canteen 19 
When we say Chernobyl was evacuated, we don't mean completely evacuated. Construction workers, biologists, and forestry workers remain there, disassembling the damaged reactor and disposing of waste in the 1,000 square mile exclusion zone around the plant. When they get tired and hungry, they need a place to eat. This is where Canteen 19 comes in. It's the most popular dining hall around and offers a menu of borscht, a Ukrainian dish made with beetroot and cabbage, pasta, porridge, fish, coffee, and so on. Both workers and tourists eat here. The restaurant promises a safe and incredible experience and meals that will provide you with the energy you need for your mission, whether dismantling machines or walking through empty streets with a tour guide. Canteen 19, like almost every other place in Chernobyl, is strange. Its lunch line serving style resembles that of a grade school cafeteria. However, many visitors' favorite part of the restaurant is the bunch of puppies that assemble outside. These beautiful animals are the descendants of pets left behind after their owners evacuated the city years ago. Although they're friendly with guests, radioactive particles may cling to their fur, and visitors are warned not to touch them. It's a wonder people are allowed to eat here at all. <laughs> the Blackbird Before the big explosion that day in April 1986, workers at the site claimed to have seen a creature they described as large, black, and bird-like. It also appeared to be a headless man with 20-foot giant wings and glowing red eyes. The ghastly humanoid rose above the horizon of Chernobyl and Pripyat, sending a message of impending danger to those who saw it. Today, the creature is known as the Blackbird of Chernobyl and some people believe that the story about its sightings is untrue. But in the days before the destruction 36 years ago, the workers and scientists claimed that they saw it. After the encounter, they were plagued with nightmares and threatening phone calls. Reports of these strange happenings persisted until the morning of April 26th. At 1.23 a.m., the reactor exploded. The most common explanation is that the Blackbird of Chernobyl may have been the same creature known as the Mothman which terrified the people of Point Pleasant, West Virginia in the days before the fall of the Silver Bridge on December 15, 1968. The two humanoids have similar descriptions, and there were reported nightmares and threatening phone calls in both cases. Investigations suggest that the appearance of this creature was an omen of only one thing, a disastrous event that will happen soon. And that disastrous event did happen at Chernobyl. <laughs> The Red Forest Humans weren't the only ones affected by the Chernobyl power plant explosion. The 10-square-kilometer area surrounding the site earned the name Red Forest after the pine trees died following the absorption of high levels of ionizing radiation from the explosion. Here's how it happened. The blast from the plant collapsed the roof of Reactor 4, exposing dust, smoke, and radioactive particles into the air. The pine forest west of the plant received a significant dosage of radiation. It was so intense that the trees died immediately, turning a ginger brown color. To date, the area is referred to as the Red Forest. The Red Forest was bulldozed in the post-disaster cleanup of 1986 to 1987 and buried in waste graveyards. However, the site still remains one of the most contaminated areas in the world. It's not just on the list of most radioactive places in Chernobyl, it's one of the most radioactive places on planet Earth. Surely the tourists wouldn't be taken to this side of Chernobyl, or what do you think? <laughs> Ivan Hard Stadium Before the accident in the former Soviet Union, Pripyat, the most iconic town in the execution zone, was a youthful city. The average age of the 50,000 people who lived there was 26. There were nightclubs, restaurants, bars, cafes overlooking the lake, and even a football team called the FC Strodo Pripyat. The team's name means builder, and the team was made up of players from a village south of Pripyat. When Pripyat was abandoned after the Chernobyl explosion, a new city was found to replace it. But before then, before Pripyat was abandoned, the Avonhard Stadium was the home ground of FC Stroido Pripyat. The stadium is now as empty as it can be, except for the 30 feet trees on the football field where players should be passing a ball to one another. The running track surrounding it that hasn't had an athlete run on it in 36 years and the rows of rotten wooden benches that should sit friends and families cheering their loved ones on the field. There are also the ruins of the press box and the bareness of the tunnels leading to what's supposed to be their dressing rooms. It was reported that on the day of the explosion, the team's opponents for the weekend game were preparing to leave for Pripyat when a helicopter landed on their training field and an official informed them that the game had been canceled. 
We wonder if they knew then that because of the blast, no football game will ever be played there again. The Stalkers Some people love to hear about Chernobyl from YouTube videos and Google. Some take the further step of touring the city and taking the radiation tests afterward. And then some prefer to sneak into the zone illegally. Stalkers are people who defy the government's restrictions and sneak into the zone for adventure, romance, or bravado. The first set of stalkers in the zone were murderers and thieves trying to escape the police by hiding there. Who would look for a criminal here? As the stalkers grew in number, they became ordinary, regular people seeking the thrill of adventure and desperate to get in undetected. But can we really call these people regular? People who take a three-day journey hiking from the zone's perimeter fence to Pripyat. People who, like trauma victims, return to the incident's site looking for answers. People who dig through debris, postcards, and notebooks left behind. According to them, the abandoned city is a time capsule, and you should go to the Chernobyl Zone to see how it was 36 years ago. The birth of the video game set in the execution zone, Stalker, in 2007, largely influenced the turnout of stalkers around the city. The game, according to one of its creators, was to make Chernobyl's story known around the world. But the game did more than that. It was so real that some of the players wanted the same experience firsthand. Short for scavengers, trespassers, adventurers, loners, killers, explorers, and robbers, the game sold over 2 million copies in its first year, and soon it built a cult following of players who felt the digital experience was not enough and needed real-life action. <laughs> the Liquidators Chernobyl was a mess after the explosion and radiation particles flew into the atmosphere. The pine forest was destroyed and the stadium had been abandoned. The children left their schools. The place had to be cleaned up and according to one liquidator, somebody had to do it. Liquidators were the military and civil personnel who had to deal with the consequences of the 1986 Chernobyl plant explosion. They were the first line of defense against transcontinental radioactive communication in the world. This group of people of about 300,000 gave up their lives, health, and families to receive the radiation people had fled from. They were able to limit the long-term and immediate damage of the catastrophe and protect others from worse harm. The group included power plant operators, firefighters, military personnel, and some other non-professionals. They were tasked with building roads, cleaning up debris around the reactor, burying contaminated buildings, equipment, and forests, and decontamination. A large percentage of the workers received an average total body radiation dose of 100 millisieverts, five times more than the dose permitted for nuclear plant workers. This means that many of them faced health effects during and after the cleanup. The liquidators are the heroes of the Chernobyl disaster. Those of them still alive today receive social benefits because of their veteran status, and December 14th is a day to honor the participants of the Chernobyl liquidation program. <laughs> Cooling Pond Catfish A lot of people believe these catfish were mutants when the video of them patrolling the cooling pond of the Chernobyl power plant went viral. The disaster of 1986 caused mutations in wildlife, but very few mutations led to extra-large sizes. Mutated animals became less efficient and have a short lifespan. Even catching food becomes too difficult for them. So these creatures are definitely not this size because of radiation. The truth is, the older they got, the larger they became. Whales catfish are known to reach massive portions. A whales could gain about 350 pounds under the right conditions, and this species can eat just about anything, dead or alive, from worms to birds to fish, to amphibians to small mammals too. Luckily for them, because of the isolation at Chernobyl, they have no competition for prey. They own the place, they're active predators and scavengers, and they're also very old. Wells catfish have been cruising the cooling pond at Chernobyl for a long, long time. Over the years, they've become a tourist attraction, one of the stops for the tour group. Although these monster fish have been exposed to radiation, they seem to not be affected by it. So for your safety, don't you dare feed on them. <laughs> radiation munching fungus In simple terms, radiotrophic fungi are fungi that can be used as an energy source to stimulate growth. A strand of fungi was first found in Chernobyl in 1991, five years after the accident, growing inside and around the nuclear power plant. 
but it took another 10 years for scientists to discover that it feeds on radiation and its properties could help protect people from radiation. Known as Cryptococcus neoformans, the fungi can be nasty if it gets into those with weak immune systems and could cause an infection known as cryptococcosis. But it can also be beneficial to humans. It contains a high level of melanin, the pigment that turns the skin darker, protecting it from the ultraviolet radiation of the sun. The presence of melanin in the fungi allows them to absorb the radiation and transform it into a different type of energy which would enable them to grow. The melanin-rich fungi grow within the cooling pond at the reactor, turning it black. It also grows on the walls of Chernobyl, and NASA scientists are considering extracting the melanin to produce a space-approved sunscreen to protect human space explorers from a large quantity of dangerous radiation all over outer space. Hmm. Abandoned Hospital One of the sites included in the tourist program is the hospital at Pripyat. Hospital 126. It was the only hospital in the city. After the explosion, it was the first place injured firefighters and security workers were taken to. The hospital was a complex of several buildings and had professionals to deal with all kinds of health issues. There was a maternity ward, a morgue, a polyclinic, an infectious disease ward, etc. But the most dangerous and most popular place in the hospital today is the basement. At 6 a.m. on April 26, 1986, there were already about 108 people from the power plant admitted to the hospital. That's a lot of people. And before the end of the morning, more people were rushed in. Some of the victims even had to be transferred to other hospitals. The victims' clothes, the bedsheets they lay on, their shoes, their uniforms, everything was thrown into the basement because they were full of radioactive particles. The hospital, like every other place in the city, was eventually evacuated, and the equipment was eventually taken to Slavlovich. So yes, Hospital 126 is highly dangerous because of those clothes. Today, the entrances are covered with a ton of sand because of the many curious tourists who desperately want to peek in at the forbidden area. <laughs> Haunting Gas Masks The most photographed collection of gas masks in Pripyat is at Middle School No. 3, located right next to the indoor swimming pool. Hundreds of these masks have been scattered across the floor by looters looking for God knows what. The Made in Russia masks are all child-sized. They would have been kept on site during the Cold War period and were made to protect against NBC attacks, nuclear, biological, and chemical attacks. Middle School No. 3 was a modern school in the days that it was in use. It had sports and music facilities like the schools these days have. There are also abandoned exercise books, corridors, window frames, and hallways. Same things you'll find in any other school. Today, the structure is in okay condition, not too bad when compared to the other schools in the area, but the sight of these masks strewn across the floor is nothing but eerie and surreal, definitely unlike every other school. In one picture, a dog can be seen wearing a mask, probably dressed up by a tourist. In another image, a gas mask lies next to a notebook on a pupil's desk. Very haunting indeed. Hmm. <laughs> Woodpecker Radar In the untouched forest surrounding the Chernobyl exclusion zone is another mysterious legacy of the Cold War, the Duga Radar. From a distance, it looks like a gigantic wall, but up close, it's a massive dilapidated structure made of turbines and antennas. Duga was an over-the-horizon radar system used as part of the Soviet Union's early warning radar network for missile defense. In simpler words, the Duga Radar was supposed to detect incoming missiles. It was to detect an attack in the first two or three minutes after the missile was launched. Isn't that something? Between July 1976 and December 1989, the giant wall emitted a sharp, repetitive tapping noise that could be heard on shortwave radios around the world. The noise was such a nuisance that many compared the sound to a woodpecker's, hence the name Woodpecker Radar. Although it was heard around the world, no one knew the actual source of the noise until years later after the collapse of the Soviet Union. The Duga systems were greatly guarded secrets. It's rumored that the documents containing information about the radars had been destroyed or locked in a secret safe somewhere. Before the Soviet Union finally revealed that the structure was a Duga radar, people devised several conspiracy theories. On the Soviet map, the location was listed as a children's map. A journalist claimed that on his visit to Chernobyl, he was told the structure was an unfinished hotel. Some people even believed that it could control the weather and damage brain cells. People came up with so many stories, and in the end, it was only a missile alarm bell. 
The mystery structure still remains there, unused and rusting away in the forests of the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone. Claw of Death There are some artifacts in Chernobyl you can touch only if you have a death wish. For example, the Claw of Death. This radioactive bucket was abandoned in the yard of the Service of Special Engineering Works in Pripyat after the cleanup of the site. The large piece of crane machinery was used weeks after the disaster on April 26 to clean up the ultra-radioactive graphite and other materials that exploded out of Reactor 4 onto neighboring roofs of the plant. The liquidators were unsure of where to leave the claw and, in the hope that no one would find it, decided the depths of the forest were the best choice. But, of course, it was found. The claw, hidden beneath the trees, excites yet terrifies tourists, but it's not dangerous to be near the claw. In fact, it's one of the tour locations. However, staying there for a long time or visiting every day is dangerous because you'll most likely catch a deadly dose of radiation. So it's okay to take photos or family groups, but don't touch them. Remember, there's a reason it's called the Claw of Death. Forgotten Church Finally on the list of mysterious things in the historical nuclear power plant is the church. Unlike the other buildings we've talked about, the church in Krasny village on the left bank of the Pripyat River is in almost perfect shape. In spite of the ruin that surrounds it, the church stands in a calm state, giving a glimpse of what life used to be like in the days before the accident. The church also contains original artifacts and letters from visitors dated years before 1986. There are crosses and murals occupying the walls and ceiling of the sanctuary. Priests occasionally visit the church to hold special rituals and conduct special services for workers of the zone and the town's former inhabitants. You can imagine what it feels like to have your entire parish evacuate their place of worship at once, without prior warning, probably without goodbyes. Maybe they didn't even get a chance to hold a final official service before they had to evacuate in all the surrounding cities. One Chernobyl explorer claimed he found a letter on the altar from a priest urging visitors to take good care of the church. To many of us, the explosion at Chernobyl is an interesting story. To some, it's an avenue for adventure, and to some, it's an experience they'll never forget. An experience that changed their lives forever. Don't you wonder, like us, if the gates would ever be open for people to live in once again? <laughs>